What's going on people? It's Kelechi back with another update to the portfolio. How are each and every single one of y'all doing today? I'm excited, man. I'm excited today and you'll see why in a minute, but I'm really excited about where the portfolio is right now. I just what I just was looking at the portfolio, trying to come up with what I was going to talk about for this video and update you guys on and I was like, "Yo, it's been about 3 months since I started this M1 Finance portfolio." If you look at this uh, graph on here, I started this portfolio March 30th and I put in $100. This was when I was getting more serious about investing. I had been doing it a little bit, but I've been doing it more with Robinhood. And as you know, through the changes that I've made on Robinhood, I've stepped away from Robinhood because it didn't let me do partial shares initially. And M1 did. And so when I started investing more and taking it more seriously with M1, because again, the market crashed at that point, if everybody remembers that market crash and I've been just consistently putting in like I told like I said $50 every two weeks so if you notice March 30th two weeks later April 9th I put in $50 then you see that little spike and then every once in a while I may have some extra money laying around and I'll be like yo let me put some more money in the account and I put in another $50 or at this point I put in another hundred dollars and I think that was the when we got that paycheck when we got the stimulus package or the stimulus check from the government. So I put in some more money. And then two weeks later, I put in another $50. Every time you see these little spikes, it's just me putting in $50, putting in $50 consistently. Like I say, when it comes to investing, it's all about doing it consistently. Dollar cost averages. When I started, the market was super cheap, but as time has progressed, it's gotten more and more expensive as the market kind of grew faster than anybody expected. But we had situations, if you look right here, that's another point where I put in like $100. If you notice, the market tanked. There was a tank in the market and I was like, yo, this is a chance and I put in $100, which to some people is not a whole lot of money, but for me, that's a good bit of money that I put into it. So anyway, and as you can see, we started with just $100 and already in just three months, which a lot of people be like three months that what are you making? But it's like for, for, for me being a small, I don't, I don't have money that's just laying around. Like I don't, I don't, I'm not making any extra income on the side through doing YouTube. Like you see a lot with a lot of the bigger channels that have like hundred thousand dollar portfolios or anything like that. They're getting a secondary income from doing YouTube and YouTube is giving them a bunch of money that then they go invest and then they show you guys on their page. But I'm not getting any of that secondary income. All I'm doing is literally the income that I currently have and I'm just putting it to work. I'm getting it to work for me. So far through this portfolio, it's earned me a dividend of $2.78. That's $2.78 that I didn't really have to work for at all. I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to use any of my time. All I had to do was pick companies and invest in those companies and they paid me some dividends. And that's just great. Like for me, it's just great. Like literally, I've put in $620 into this account and I've made $53, but I don't really count that as money in my pocket because at the end of the day, this overall number right here, this current value number right here can change every every other day. So I don't really look at that too much. What I'm focused more as it is called passive income, what I'm focused on is just the idea of trying to get my passive income up, you know, trying to ensure that I'm making some kind of extra money on the side when it comes to this portfolio so yeah i'm i'm excited it's for me it's a it, it's a big deal in my robin hood portfolio it's a little bit more because it's been there a little bit longer and because of microsoft microsoft played a big role in why my robin hood is where it is at this point in time but i've been doing this one combined with m1 finance and basically combining both of those i'm over about 12 1500 dollars invested and I think by July, because I'm probably gonna splurge, my birthday's coming up and I don't wanna really buy anything for my birthday, I'm probably gonna splurge on just buying more stocks and buying more shares and company on my birthday. So this is probably gonna be about $2,000 around that time and I'm excited, I'm, I'm really excited just to see the continual growth of, of just the portfolio. It's not the biggest portfolio, it doesn't compare to a lot of other people's portfolio, but like I always say, you gotta start from somewhere. There's a, like we talked about one time, there's that Chinese proverb, the best time to plant a tree was yes was yesterday, but there is no time like today. There's no time like today. The second best time is today. So start today, even if it's just $10, open up a Robinhood account or an M1 Finance account. And by the way, if you click the link in the description below, 
you can get a free stock if you open up Robinhood and you can get $10 if you open up an M1 Finance account. So hit those link down in the description and check it out. But anyway, as far as this portfolio is concerned, the only update that I have is I'm doing two things with this portfolio. One, as I learn more and more about companies and as I learn more and more about investing, one of the things that I'm starting to do is I'm changing my mindset a little bit on a few companies. Uh, in my consumer staples portion of my portfolio, I'm switching up. If you notice, this, this <laughs> my actual target versus my my net valuation in this portfolio is showing 80% in Disney and 5% in Coke, Pepsi, Costco, and Walmart. So I'm not selling out of them, mainly because I don't want to incur any taxes or anything like that. So I'm not selling out of these stocks. However, they're going to play a very, very minimal role in my portfolio. The main reason for that is when I first started investing, I was just focusing on good businesses, good businesses, good business, good businesses. That's all I was looking at. I was looking at their 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 income statements i was looking at their their money the, their money flow all those things to to understand the company and i was just like good businesses and these businesses are all good businesses coke pepsi costco walmart but i'm starting to move away from just focusing on good businesses the other thing i'm starting to think about is businesses that i align with as well like i thought about it initially and I was just kind of like, yeah, I kind of align with some of these companies. I buy some of their products. But in all honesty, when it comes down to it, when it comes to Coke, I don't believe in Coke, Pepsi, those kind of like soda products. I don't believe in them. Even though they diversify very well into other products, I just, I don't know. It's just giving me angst. It's been giving me angst for a bit now. So I'm going to push those to the side a little bit more. And then when you look at like a company like Costco or Walmart, they're just, I just, they, they're very good companies and they have very good company models, but Costco is expensive and Walmart eh, is done well and has been doing well for me, but I just, eh, I just want to move into things that I actually truly, truly believe and trust in. So that's why this week, some of the things that I bought, some of the holdings that I bought with the extra hundred dollars that I put into my account, if we go to activity, the first ones that I bought was I bought more Realty Income Corp. And I believe Realty Income Corp is one of those really, really good companies. It's a very good REIT. It has a very good balance sheet. I'm going to pull it back up. Let's go here. Real Estates. It has a very, very good balance sheet. Like it's a just a well-balanced company in all sides. Plus it pays a monthly dividend and that doesn't hurt. So that's one of the ones that I'm going to be putting a whole lot more money into because they just do a good job with the business that they are in. And then of course, the other segment that I'm throwing a whole lot of cash into is Microsoft and Apple. As you guys know, and I say it all the time, I am a Microsoft fanboy. I am a Microsoft fanboy. Although I don't like Apple products, but everyone around me loves Apple products. So it would be stupid of me not to, not to invest in Apple. Apple is still one of those growth companies that I believe in and I always keep investing in. There are other growth plays that I'll do later on. But first of all, my goal for each one of these is to at least hit $1,000 in each one of these portfolios before I do anything else. So if we go back into this to show you guys some of the other moves that I've made, like I said, I bought Microsoft and Apple, and then also I bought Microsoft Realty Income Corp and Apple some more. Like I said, I'm really, really going to be focusing on building out these the technology, real estate, and financials. I'm going to be focusing on that. And in financials, I'm basically focusing on Bank of America. It's the only financials that I'm looking at right now, even though I still like JP Morgan. And uh, yeah, JP Morgan is the only other one that I truly like out of all the banks out there. And of course, you guys know I got Ally in Robinhood. So those are the companies that I'm, I'm kind of focusing on as of right now. Just as an update to this portfolio. So if you look at my holdings, it's still the same 10 companies that I've had for the longest time. That's not going to change any time soon. This video is starting to get a bit long, but it's okay. Let's go into Robinhood real quick. So in my Robinhood portfolio, I only made one move. And that one move was buying this ETF, the Impact Shares NAACP Minority Empowerment ETF. If you listen to my podcast, or if you listen to my podcast, I did a podcast about this on Thursday. You guys should all go check it out. It's the Rambling Mind podcast. And I make one every Tuesday and every Thursday. Subscribe to it. Check it out. We talk about 
finance basically we talk about finances stock investing and of course we also touch on a lot of the business news that's affecting the markets but anyway i bought into this etf because i have been searching for a way that my dollars can help push the movement forward can help push this not just black lives matter movement but actually push the black community forward so what this ETF does is it monitors by criteria set by the NWACP. It monitors different companies and adds them into the ETF based on how well they do socially. How well are they impacting the community around them? How well are they doing stuff to push further, not just for black people, but also for different ethnicities? So that's why I bought into this ETF. Now, I don't know if this is the best ETF for that. But it's the one that right now I've done my research on and I found and I like. So if you guys know any ETFs that might be better than this one, please let me know. Put it down in the comments below. And I would really love to. I'm really looking at making a portion of my investing portfolio to really display more of some of my beliefs as far as when it comes to uh, pushing some for some movements or some change in environment and all those kind of things. So. The other big news is I am finally getting a dividend from one of my ETFs and it's a dollar and 24 and it's from my DGRO ETF. And of course, I finally have access to drip. Like we talked about previously, I finally have access to drip and that's just going to get reinvested right back into DGRO. This is my growth dividend play and it's going to get right back invested in there and I'm excited. I'm very, very excited. I can't wait. Well, not that I'm going to see this money, but I still can't wait because I'm just excited to finally get uh, get some of those dividends paid out to me. But anyway, that's all I have for this video. I hope y'all learned one, maybe two things out of this whole thing. And the main lessons to learn out of this is dollar cost average, dollar cost average. When it comes to investing, dollar cost, dollar cost average your way to victory, especially when the market is doing normal moves. However, if we have like a tank in the market, and you have some extra money lying about, that's the time to buy into stocks that you've always wanted to buy into and own more of. But generally speaking, for the most part, dollar cost average your way to victory when it comes to investing. Just dollar cost average your way to victory. But anyway, that's all I got for y'all. Remember, generosity is always better than greed. Generosity is greater than greed. It's been your boy Kalichi. God bless each and every single one of y'all. And I'm out. Peace.